Good morning, everybody. I hope you're doing well. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. A beautiful day for a beautiful day for Jesus to be in your life as well. Amen. Uh, so uh, I know it's been several days since I've shared some daily bread with you, but I wanted to come to you today and share some word and uh, just let the word of God shape and mold us into the image that He has for us. So let's get right into it in First Samuel chapter five. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 2. Okay, and I made the statement that um, God knocked over the idol. Okay, God supernaturally knocked over this idol that we're going to read about here in 1 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 2. It says, When the Philistines took the ark of God and they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon, and when they... Uh, of Ashdod arose early on the morrow to the next day behold Dagon was fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord and they took Dagon and set him in his place again and when they arose early on the morrow morning behold Dagon was fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord and the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold only the stump of Dagon was left to him Okay, we'll stop right there. So here we see, just to kind of go over real quickly what's going on, the Philistines were the, the arch, arch rivals or enemies of the uh, children of God, the, the Israelites. So they were always fighting, and uh, there was no different at this point in time. They were uh, fighting against each other. The Philistines had just conquered Israel. Okay, and if you go back even further, you know, all of this was for a reason. God did not allow them to be conquered just because, you know, He wanted them to be conquered. Whenever there is defeat in the people of God, it's usually because there's some kind of judgment that God has allowed upon that people. Okay, and so what happened was uh, the, the priest, Eli, had two sons, and his two sons were being very evil, being very wicked, and doing a lot of things that were evil and sinful, and the priest, Eli, did not reprimand them. He did not rebuke them. He did not correct them. He did not, you know, put pressure on them to get you know things right so he kind of just overlooked it you know and how much how many times do we do that with our children or with people you know our uh, people in the in the church or we don't want to offend them we don't want them to leave um, you know we want them to keep coming and and participating and contributing and paying their tithes and everything so we don't tell them the things that they need to know or hear about uh, sins that are in their lives that need to be corrected we don't give them the full counsel of the Lord we just make them feel comfortable and we're not doing them any service by doing this. So Eli was doing this to his, his boys, his two boys. And so the Lord finally had enough and he said, I'm going to bring judgment upon you. Your, your, your household is going to be basically uh, judged, condemned. And uh, I'm going to bring judgment because you have not corrected this evil that was taking place in the house of God through the priesthood and so you know years later the judgment starts to fall and we see judgment coming against the children of Israel they go to battle against the Philistines and they lose they take the Ark of the Covenant out there to think maybe God's presence will be with us if we fight again uh, the Ark of the Covenant was representative of the, the glory and the presence of God the blessings of God because God's presence would fall upon the Ark of the Covenant, literally fall when they would offer the sacrifices, the blood sacrifices there. Uh, his presence, His glory would fall right on top of the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, and it was just like this box, huge box with angels with their wings pointing towards one another encased with gold. So it was a really beautiful artifact, but it symbolized the presence and the glory and the power of God. And so they took the Ark of the Covenant out to fight the Philistines and they still lost because the judgment of God was upon them. The judgment of God was upon them because of their leaders, their priests. You see, when there's leaders and they don't take a stand, sometimes, well, all the time, within time, judgment will fall upon uh, those that are underneath the leaders. If they don't do anything to correct it, if they just follow along with the, with the crowd, just follow the leader kind of thing uh, you know and you might you might not think that's fair but you know that's what happened that's what's happening in our country right now through leadership that we have 
judgments are coming against our nation. And if they, if they don't change their ways, if we don't pray for our leaders that God would change their hearts, or God would break those strongholds that are guiding them, or silence those voices that are whispering into their ears to, to legalize things that are of, not of God, to promote uh, things that are, that are sinful and wicked. If we, don't, if we don't rise up as a body of Christ and begin to fight in the spirit against these principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and wickedness in high places, all these spiritual strongholds that are in our nation, then we're going to eventually see the judgment of God fall upon this nation. You know, it's, we're in such a crucial time right now as, as, a, as a body of Christ. We need to wake up and we need to get into action in fighting and interceding for our nation, for our country. It's time to, you know, get off of our comfortable lazy boy and to get up and to start going into the battlefield, to get into the warfare against these powers of Satan that are trying to destroy our nation. They're trying to pervert the right ways of God. They're trying to drag our country through the mud, the muck and the mire of sin. And, and, and promote all that is wicked and sinful. We can't just stand back and just let it happen. Somebody's got to stand up and be a voice of righteousness, be a voice of truth to correct and in love. Yes, in love, with patience, with prayer, but nonetheless, we've got to, we've got to uh, raise our voice. Raise our voice. We can't hide in, in the corner and, and just kind of blend in with the woodwork. We've got to be a light in the dark place. So. Uh, Eli did not do this and judgment came upon them and that's why they were in this situation. So the Philistines overcame them. They took the Ark of the Covenant and they put it in the city of Ashdod. In the temple of Dagon, their god. They set it up right beside the temple, the idol of Dagon, was one, which was one of their gods that they served. And uh, as, you, as we read, you know, several times they did this and every time in the morning the the idol would be on his face, flat on his face, bowing basically, in essence, before the one true God, you know, or the, or the, the, the symbol of the one true God, which was the Ark of the Covenant. And then ultimately, the head was broken off, the arm, the palms were cut off of the God, which was just completely annihilating their, their God. Okay, and, and so I, I brought, I just thought about reading this, I felt to read about this and teach about this a little bit today. Because I want to encourage somebody today that our God is the Almighty God. There is only one God, one true God, the Bible says, and it is the Lord God Almighty, Yahweh, Jehovah God, who was manifested in flesh through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, revealed unto us, amen, through Jesus Christ. And so we don't need to be afraid of any other God. We don't need to, you know, be concerned about any other anything else that could come against us because our God is the one true God and our God will cause all to bow before him there is nothing that can exalt itself against God and overcome his will you know God will always win you know we all like to win right everybody likes to be on the winning side nobody likes to, to be the loser right so just know that our God wins Jehovah God he wins so get on the winning side. You know, God is working in the earth. He's doing things right now. He's moving. He's shaking. He's, he's putting pieces in place, just like a master chess player. And he's going to fulfill his perfect will. The question is, are you going to get involved? Are you going to be a part of the process of what God is doing? A part of the plan, the great master plan that God is enacting in the earth. You know, there's nothing more fulfilling than being involved in what God is doing. All of the other stuff is it's fine to be productive and fruitful and work hard and make money and buy, sell and all that. It's, that's nothing wrong with that, but that's not going to fulfill your heart, your soul. That's not going to give you that, that joy, that expectation, that, that energy that you really want. All of that is superficial. You can't really, you can't really live a full, fruitful, productive, uh, you know, purposeful life without being connected to God, having God working inside of you through His Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible says that when we come to God, we have to repent of our sins because that is what separates us from God. Our sin, our rebelliousness, our pride, our lust, our selfish desires, you know, fornications and adulteries and idolatries, the things that we put before Him. We've got to repent of all that. Our hatred and bitterness and anger and frustration, 
towards others. We've got to forgive and let go of all that. All of that is a weight. It's a heaviness on us that keeps us from progressing forward and drawing closer to the one true God. And so when we do that, then we can begin to start building that relationship. We can be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins, as it tells us in Acts 2.38. We can be filled with the Holy Spirit, which is the power of God working inside of us. And then we begin a, a, a journey of fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Okay, we learn how to hear the voice of God, to hear the Spirit, what the Spirit is speaking to His church, to you, to your, your church, to your family. You know, God is speaking. He's moving. He's working. He's always at work. You know, we were talking about this in our youth class the other day, how God is not a, a wasteful, lazy, just absent-minded God. He's always purposeful. He's always doing something. You know, He doesn't just waste time or waste resources. He's always a purposeful God doing things for the good. And so let's get involved. I want to encourage you all to get involved in what God is doing. Jump in the river of God's flowing. God is flowing like His, His, His purposes and plans are flowing like a rushing river. There's nothing that can stop it. There's nothing that can get in the way. There's nothing that can prevent it. You know, God is going to achieve His purposes. And He's going to have a remnant. The Bible talks about this idea of a remnant people, a remnant church, which is those people that are called by His name, that are chosen, that are found faithful, that are anointed by His Holy Spirit, that are uh, working in the kingdom of God, fulfilling the purposes of God. This is the remnant church that God wants to raise up in this season to fulfill His plans and purposes. So get involved. You know, don't be distracted by all of the things in life. It's so easy for us to get distracted with life, with work, with you know activities. It's very, very easy. I mean, this is probably the, one of the biggest things that we struggle with is we are so distracted in this day and age. There's too many voices speaking into our heart, into our mind, through all of the activities and all of the entertainment and all of the social media and the, and the movies and the music and, and the, you know, all of the activities, traveling and this and that. There's a lot of things that are vying for our attention and we're giving all of our attention to these things and no attention to the Lord God Almighty. No attention to what God's purpose is for our life and we're missing it. We're missing the boat. So, I want to encourage you to seek the Lord more than ever. Pray harder than you ever did before. We're entering into a season where it's going to be more difficult for true Christians to stand up and represent righteousness. As persecution comes from legislation, from our peers, from the workplace, from our government, because we want to stand for what is right, we are not going to compromise on sin. We can't compromise on sin. There is no compromise on sin. Sin is always going to be sin, no matter how we feel. Sin will always be sin because God is what who is the one who establishes right and wrong. And so if our country is legislating that sin is, is good and right, then we as a people of God have to stand against that. You know, we're not going to fight in a physical sense and go burn down buildings and all that. We're not going to do all that. That's carnal. Okay, we're going we're gonna to fight spiritually. We're going to fight in our prayer time. We're going to fight and intercede for our country in prayer and in fasting. Deny ourselves food and push away, you know, water. And, and just seek the Lord and read His Word and really get, get in tune to what God is doing. That's how we fight our battles as Christians. Okay, we're not in a carnal battle anymore. We're in a spiritual battle. We're not like the Old Testament where they used to go out there and literally fight battles. We're fighting with the Holy Spirit now. We're fighting in prayer and declaring the Word of God over our nation, over our families, over our loved ones, our friends, and all those that we care about. Okay, so this is a message, uh, you know, to, to wake you up, hopefully shake you up, encourage you to get more serious in your walk with the Lord. I hope you share this on your Facebook and continue to pray that God's Word will get out there. We need more labors in the, in the fields of harvest. There's too much work to be done. There's so many people that are that are hurting, that are suffering, that are bound, that are confused, that are lost. They don't know that they're lost and they're walking dead. You know, there's this the show that 
was real popular. I don't know. I never watched it, but I heard it was real popular called The Walking Dead. And it's about zombies and all that. And, you know, a lot of people are walking dead because they, they think they're alive. They think they have some kind of purpose in life. And, they're, you know, they're working real hard and doing a lot of things that they think are meaningful. But they're literally just wasting all of their life. And they're not accomplishing God's purpose for their life. They're walking dead. And we need to help them wake up. And the only one that can wake them up is Jesus. And so share Jesus with your friends, your family, your neighbors, your coworkers, your brothers, sisters. Share Him with the world around you. Share Him with the stranger God places in your past. Share Him with that homeless person that you see every morning on your way to work. Take a second, stop by and encourage them. Pray with them. Give them something to drink. You know, give them something that they need a, a jacket or something. Give them a jacket just as, a, as an opportunity to build relationship. And then begin to share the, the love of Jesus with them. Pray for them that God will set them free. Believe. Have faith. Believe that God will do a miracle in their life. You know, we need to begin to walk in faith in these days. It's time for the church to believe what the Bible says. You know, it's been too long that we've been playing church and just hanging out. But it's time to actually be the church. It's time to be a mighty force in the earth. Not because of our ability, wisdom, or strength, but because of the Holy Spirit that God has given us that gives us power and authority to declare His will. We have power and authority to cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, and preach the gospel to every creature. This is something God has ordained for His people. So, uh, once again, let's rise up together, let's pray together, let's pray for one another, let's cast aside, uh, you know, all of our, um, you know, personal, let's not allow personal convictions and our little customs and traditions and all of that to get in the way of what God is doing. There's nothing wrong with having traditions and customs and all that. But let's not let that be a stumbling block to where we cause our brother to stumble or where we cause division within the body of Christ and we distract ourselves from the true purpose of God which is to save souls, to save the lost and to live in holiness which means to be set apart from sin and to be a righteous vessel before the Lord. So, um, just wanted to share that with you this morning, and uh, I appreciate you guys' prayers, and uh, we're going to be going out today, Lord willing, to serve the homeless, and if anybody wants to get involved with that, we'd love your help. Uh, we'll be leaving, probably, we'll be gathering probably about 5 o'clock in Tulare, California. So, if you want to join forces with us, and go out there and fight the devil, and help people get set free, we need your help. My number is 559-909-3117 if you'd like to get involved or if you want to donate anything to the ministry, uh, you know, food, water, clothes, shoes, sleeping bags, tents, whatever you think that they could use out there. Or if you want to donate financially, either way, we'll put it all to, right to the ministry. Please reach out to me and we'd, we'd appreciate your help. Again, 559-909-3117 is my number. Uh, if you need prayer for anything, please don't hesitate, don't hesitate to reach out. We're here to intercede for you and declare God's will over your life. Whether you need healing, deliverance, a blessing, you know, financially, whatever it is, God is able to meet your need. Uh, so we'd love to unite with you. Okay? And uh, if you'd like to be born again, if you've never been born again, you want to be baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, you want to repent, truly repent of your sins and become a true disciple of Christ. Not some fake, you know, Christian that just has a superficial faith and um, doesn't really love Jesus and love His Word. I'm talking about true disciples. God knows the heart. He knows when those are, when people are truly following Him and when they're just acting, they're just posers. They're just playing the part, but they're not, their heart is not really in it. God knows the difference. And so if you want to be that true Christian, that true disciple, and you want to make a covenant with Christ, to accept Him as Lord and Savior, and follow His voice, follow His Word, and be baptized in His name for the remission of your sins, we'd love to help you. If you've been baptized as a little child, that's fine. But in the Bible, we see people were always baptized as adults, knowing right, right and wrong, knowing who Jesus Christ was, and being able to accept them, accept Him as Lord and Savior. They were able to make that commitment, just like when you get married. You don't get married when you're two years old. You get married when you're of age, and you can know the commitment, the covenant you're making. So if you want to make that covenant as a grown man, a woman, uh, we'd love to help you get baptized in Jesus name as the Bible tells us to do in Acts 238 and other places we see examples of it um, if you need the Holy Spirit we'd love to pray for you that you receive it so let's pray Father I thank you for this word today 
I thank you for the encouragement that we get from this word about how powerful and how awesome and how mighty you are. You are the only God. There is no other God. All other gods are fake posers. They're phony and they are subordinate. They're not really gods. They're devils. They're demons acting like gods, trying to get glory, trying to get praise. And you are greater than all those things, Lord. So we just thank you, God, that we have that confidence in you. That we know that you are always going to overcome. That you will always defeat the plans of the enemy. You will always, uh, you know, see us through our troubles and struggles and trials. That we don't have to be afraid. We don't need to be in fear. We only fear when we feel like we are, uh, you know, the underdog. When we are out, out muscled, outwitted. Or when we are weaker, but we are not through you because you are greater, Lord. You have all wisdom, all power, all knowledge in your, in your hand. And we are your children and you are living inside of us through your Holy Spirit. So we just thank you, God, for that comfort. Help us, Lord, to be bold in our faith. Help us to walk with faith. Walk by faith and not by feelings and emotions. Because we are not a children of emotion. We are children of faith. And we just thank you, God, for helping our faith and removing all disbelief, all doubt. Remove it right now in Jesus' name. All fear we commanded to leave in the name of the Lord. We thank you, God, for helping us to be strong, helping us to raise ourselves up on our feet, to get our foundation on t uh, underneath us, the foundation of your word, and to go forward and to do great exploits for your name's sake, for your honor. We know that you have called us for this very purpose, Lord. And we surrender ourselves voluntarily to you this day. Take over, Lord. We've made a mess of our life. Take over today. Have your way in our life. Cleanse us of all of our sin. Wash us in the precious blood of Jesus. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And give us power to live for you and do all the great things that you want us to do. We take authority over every demonic thing that has been lying to us. We renounce all sin. We renounce all evil, all doubt, all fear. We renounce all curses on our family curses in our bloodline. We renounce all witchcraft and sorcery and occult activity that we may have been involved in or our family has been involved in. We renounce it all right now in the name of Jesus. Purify our hearts. Purify our bloodline. Purify our minds in Jesus' name and sanctify us for your holy purposes. We pray all this in the mighty name of the Lord and we thank you God for honoring our prayers and being with us and going before us and behind us and protecting us and prospering us for your will to be done. We love you and we appreciate you and we will always trust in you, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in and continue to pray that God will help me with this ministry. It is a challenge to be to do this every day. I'm trying to make it daily, but obviously it's, you know, we're in pro work in progress just like everybody else. We're all a work in progress. So I hope this is a blessing to you. God bless you all. Have a beautiful day. And Lord willing, we will see you soon with some more Daily Bread.